name is Danny, and I'm from Danny Vitality and I am your Vitality Coach. So today I'm going to be talking to Prosper on the online prosperity show and I'm going to be sharing some tips with you on how to make the most of your day, how to start loving your reflection in the mirror and how to live with vitality. So it's not hard, there's no restriction and there's no dieting. Another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, and today we've got Danny Strong. Danny, how are you doing this morning? I am amazing. Thank you, Prosper. I had a wicked weekend full of sun, full of wine, cheese, and then gym to counter that. So it was an amazing weekend. I've woken up feeling super refreshed today. Understandable. And considering you the vitality coach, um, that's it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen watching the show right now, Danny is a certified holistic nutrition, lifestyle, and vitality coach. She's on a mission to help um, ladies or women like yourself to regain their vitality. Now, tell us a little bit about what you do there, Danny, and um, who should actually care about your work. Okay. Well... What I do, I've, I've really tried to hone in on my snapshot message and the word vitality kept singing out to me because it all means the same thing to us. We are thriving in life. We're healthy. We're fit. We're feeling phenomenal. We are just owning every area of our life. Now, how we get there is very different to each individual. So what I adore doing is looking at each woman who isn't quite living with vitality. So she's feeling that disconnect with what she looks or what she sees in the mirror and from what she truly knows she is deep down. So she's thriving in every other area of her life. She's caring for others. She's busy. She's got a social life. But when it comes to what she wants to achieve for herself, she's fallen off that priority list because her life is so full. So what I do is I hold space for women to, for women to put themselves back onto their priority list, to set their intentions of the woman they desire to be. And then week on week, we set mini milestones to help them get there. So the biggest thing is that they're no longer restricting their food and sabotaging their healthy efforts, but they're living a full and healthy life because they just want to feel phenomenal. Understandable. Your biggest thing is uh, ha having women um, love what they see in the mirror. Can yeah. You us, can you just give us a brief outline of what some women are going through in as much as they are not enjoying what they get to see in the mirror? Absolutely. Well, do you know what? I can tell you from personal experience, Prosper, uh, for years, I would punish myself at the gym and I'd stand in that mirror and I would pinch fat and I'm putting fat in speech marks because there barely was any. And I could have got down to a ridiculous tiny size and still not be happy with what I saw in the mirror. So that was my control. I was trying to control how my body was looking to make up for the fact that I was not living with vitality. So I was unhappy. I was dissatisfied. And I called I, that I was on the hamster wheel of life, just going round and round, monotony, miserable, something had to change. And so when I looked in that mirror, I knew that the woman that I was deep down inside was not reflected in what I saw physically, but also emotionally in mind, body and spirit. So that's what I see happening with women. And that's when they come to me. Understandable. What normally causes that disconnect? Because, you know, in life, we, we're here to contribute to others. We're here mm. to self-discover. And we're also here to, um, you know, like, like I said earlier, help other people thrive and people don't quite, um, you know, find themselves or they're left frustrated or confused about who yes. they are. So. Absolutely. Well, I think you nailed the biggest point and it's that self discovery. So back in New Zealand, I wasn't quite ready on my journey for that full self discovery that I'm, I've gone through and still going through. I believe it's a never ending journey. However, I was, I was unhappy and I was looking for that happiness in other areas. So perhaps if I go out more, perhaps if I meet more men, perhaps if I eat more glorious foods with my friends, perhaps if I train at the gym every day, I'll find that happiness or buy my clothes, buy my car, look for those external factors so that really I should have been looking internally for that happiness. So I think the self-discovery is one where we see that disconnect. 
The second one is when we are so busy in our lives that we're literally up at the crack of dawn. And especially for a lot of the women that I work with is that they have families, they run the household, they've got managerial positions at work. So they're busy all day. They come home, they care for the kids, they're there for their husband, they go to bed. There's no time for self-care, self-reflection, or having that time for themselves to really hone in on what it is that is going to uh, realign that disconnect with their desires. So that's where I come in and I hold that space for them to take them on that self-discovery journey. Understandable. So it starts with discovering the self. And what, what does what we have to eat have to do with your overall well-being? Massive. I, I, I didn't realize myself how important... Uh, food and nourishment is in your day. So how I then switched what I was doing on its head, literally, is I started going to CrossFit. I found a CrossFit community. And in that, we changed our nutrition to get the most out of our CrossFit training. Now, a few months after I did that, my life just started turning around. So I started getting happier because the endorphins from doing a different form of exercise coupled with being fueled by this amazing food. And then all of a sudden the byproduct is I'm looking in the mirror and I'm admiring these muscles when before I was pinching fat, remember? And I was going, oh my God, I've suddenly created this change. I've suddenly become happy. And it wasn't even a, a conscious decision. So it took something to switch that mindset and really create that long-term health. So coming back to your question, why is nourishment so important? Is that it fuels not just our body, but our day, our lifestyle, our energy, our health, our happiness. It's the platform. And so very often we turn to foods in those moments that we are not hungry. So we might be stressed, unhappy, feeling some kind of emotion and food becomes our trigger. So when we nourish ourselves with a cascade of nutrients and whole foods and nourishing fats and meats, if you like eating meat or other forms of protein, we become much more level in our hormones and also in our emotions. So then we look to less and less to reach out for those foods that may nourish us in a different way that's less conducive to our goals. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> now, Danny, um, I wouldn't know and I wouldn't understand every single diet that's out there. Ugh, so neither. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much information overload on generic diet. <laughs> yes, yes. Can you just maybe elaborate to us, you know, what would you think is actually a clear path or should people become addicted to diets because they're scientifically proven to... <laughs> to work or Proven. how does that work out <laughs> Yes. Do you know, I'm smiling from ear to ear because this is my jam. I'm probably one of the only nutrition coaches doing what I do. And I'm like, say goodbye to dieting. No more diets for you. <laughs> so yes, diets work for different kinds of people, but we've got to realize that we are all so extremely different. So the ketogenic diet might work for your best mate, but it would be awful for you. And low carb might work for somebody, but it's terrible for somebody else. And fasting is good, but not for somebody else. So there's all of this information overload. Where I differ to a lot of people in the market and what they're doing is that I look at each individual person. The foods that they enjoy, that they know are healthier for them and are going to take them closer to their intentions. Uh, and then the times that they eat and what they enjoy eating. Do they like three meals a day? Do they like to snack? Do they like to have something before bed? Do they not eat until lunchtime? We go through a day in the life of somebody. So I learn to understand what meals not only they enjoy, but the family enjoys so we can get the complete family buy-in because there's nothing worse than mum being on a diet at the end of the table with a chicken breast and lettuce leaf. And then the rest of the family enjoying their delicious meal that mum isn't allowed to have. And here's another thing. You are allowed whatever you want, but it's in alignment to what your intentions are. So if I have my glass of wine and cheese platter every night, I would not be reaching my intentions. If I have it once a week, amazing. So it's living that full life. It's not restricting anything. It's working with what people know they enjoy and are healthier for them. And then my guidance is right. How can we take this meal or snack 
and make it a, a great nutrient balance in terms of your protein, your fats, and your carbohydrates, and really help fuel not just your day and your lifestyle, but your intentions and the women you desire to be as well. So see you later dieting. Bye-bye restriction. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> I can actually see you fired up when you talk so about much. that aspect about it. So yeah. <clears throat> in, in as much as... Um, just maybe giving us a specific example, you have mentioned that not uh, every person is the same and mm. react differently to different diets. Um, when I was growing up, they told me to put out my hands like this and they mm -hmm. say oh, every finger is the same. So you can't have a one size fits all type That's thing. So how then can somebody figure out, maybe they haven't quite spoken to you yet, but mm. how can they figure out which palate is good for them or which, which diet um, method is good for them? Absolutely. I have um, three vital elements to eating well. It's being conscious. So the first one's being conscious to every time your body is hungry. You intuitively select the foods that you know make you feel good. And then the last one is you are aligned with your intentions and your desires. So the number one, being conscious. Are you hungry at the moment that you are reaching for that food? If you're not hungry, what else is it? So do you need a hug from your partner? Do you need a chat to your girlfriend? Do you need to go for a quick walk to release some steam so you're not going to food for your crutch? Secondly is take a note of how food is making you feel. So if you have a certain food or a snack and you feel like you need to go to bed afterwards to digest, it's too much for your body. Or if you get a stomach ache, a migraine, you feel sick, you feel sluggish, uh, I know in, when I eat a lot of dairy, I get a cloggy throat feeling and so do a lot of my clients that I talk to. So it's becoming aware of how foods make you feel. So if after a food or meal, you're feeling great and you're energized and your blood sugar levels don't drop, so you're not tired, perfect, carry on eating it. And this is the same for healthy foods. If I eat too much cauliflower or too much raw cabbage, it's not pretty, so I don't do it. So becoming mindful, I think, is the, the biggest step to seeing which foods are best for you and actually seeing if you're hungry in that moment. Understandable. Now, Danny, you probably worked with a fair amount of women. What sort of response or feedback are you getting from the ladies after they have spent a, a considerable amount of time with you and your, your work? Oh, do you know what? This is the part. I'm actually getting goosebumps. <laughs> This is the part and this is why I do what I do because they say to me, I have finally discovered freedom. I'm finally no longer dieting and I'm just eating foods that feel great, not just for me, but for my family, not just for my family, but for the women and my circle around me that are now starting to adopt how they eat and it's all helping them feel amazing so that after they work with me, it's not just a, oh great, I'm doing an eight week program with Danny and then I'm gonna go back to what I was doing because I don't do diets, there's no restriction. So they suddenly found a way of eating and living that is conducive to their intentions and the woman they desire. And you know, six months down the track, they're like, Danny, oh my God, I've just got down to this weight and I never thought it was possible. And you know what, I have my wine, I have my chocolate, I have my snacks that I enjoy and I live a full life and I'm still getting results. And that is the, the kind of feedback that I'm constantly getting. So sharing my ethos, living with vitality is so what I'm here to do. And it feels phenomenal. I understand. Well, on behalf of all the ladies out there, you're doing an amazing job. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, somebody would have been watching this and maybe really inspired by your story, your energy and everything else that you've got to do for them. How can people get a hold of you? Do you know, the quickest way that they could get hold of me is jumping onto my website, dannyvitality.com. So it's D-A-N-I vitality.com. There's a, an email me section, or you can find me on social media on Facebook and Instagram with the same name, Danny Vitality. Understandable. That's how we would have gotten in touch. And, Amazing. Um... <laughs> now, Prosper, am I okay to offer... I like things in threes. I don't know why I like threes. Okay. And I offer the first three ladies to send me a private message, a free vitality revival session, just to hear about what's going on in their lifestyle and vitality. 
Oh, thank you so much for that. I will put those details in the show notes. Awesome. And then obviously, yes, because your energy, your experience, and just your positivity is, is going to make or oh, change a lot of lives. And if we can use this platform to help, then that would be also amazing. Thank you so much for that offer. Now, You're welcome. Danny, just winding up this show today, can you just maybe give us, you like three things in threes, right? Maybe three. I do. <laughs> for us to um you know just sit on so that we get to understand what it actually means to be like to to have vitality in our lives and also you know what we should do in order to start enjoying watching ourselves in the mirror wonderful okay the first thing is is putting yourself on that priority list because one of the biggest things that i see when i'm starting to coach women is that they just, they don't feature on their self care and on their priority lists. So it's setting yourself up for the day. It could be a morning ritual, journaling in a shower, counting your blessings, sending gratitude, or today is going to be amazing. Or if it's not such a great day today, I'm just going to be kind to myself. Set yourself up. So put yourself on that priority list. The second one is really being in tune with your body. And as I was saying earlier, being conscious to the choices that you make. Now, one of my mantras is I choose to feel good. So if that's food, situations, a conversation, if it doesn't make me feel so good, I let it go and I turn it around and I make sure that I am feeling good in that moment. So I let stuff go that's not important. The third one, and this really just comes down to why, the why you want to feel healthy, the why you want to feel vibrant and full of vitality. Write down some things that you want to achieve for yourself and why it's important so that every time you're making those decisions for yourself and whatever those decisions may be, is it in alignment with my intentions and my values? Is it going to help me feel good, vibrant, full of vitality? Understandable. Well, Danny, I can't thank you enough for your expertise, your knowledge, and your story above all um, on the Online Prosperity Show today. And if you're just umming and ahhing, sitting in the audience there and wondering, how can I start feeling good about myself? How can I gain my confidence? And how can I regain that vitality? Like what Danny says, start putting yourself on the priority list. Start looking mm. at you as the person that's going to be delivering um, you know, your life to a happier existence. Now, thank you so much once again, Danny, for your thank time you. for the show today. Pleasure talking to you. Great stuff. <laughs>